Hello. Camera. Yeah. Let's set things up here. Today we are doing something different, which isn't to say I have like a fucking set standard for this or whatever, but different in the sense of the content which we are getting into, I guess. Because as you can see by these helpful whatever uh what we're playing today isn't entirely uh, meant for English speakers such as ourselves because it's Yakuza Ishin or Ryugaka Tokyo Ishin which the whenever it's localized in English they call it the Yakuza games none of this is helpful <laughs> But uh, this is just the demo. I haven't imported the game over yet. But it is a super rad little game. I play it. I'm like, yep, yep, this, this is some fun. I play it. Play it right now. Unfortunately, this is one of those games that's basically never going to get localized. Even if Sega weren't a bunch of jerks, it's like so, like steeped in you know how they say like Americana this is Japanicana like it's so integral in like Japanese history that there's so much stuff that they would have a lot of difficulty translating for Western sensibilities so I imagine they just you know wouldn't even want to bother putting the effort in I guess which is unfortunate because based on the demo, this game's actually really fucking awesome. So, I do plan on importing it when I can afford it because fucking shipping that shit over from Japan ain't cheap. But I had an idea for, for a playthrough of this where it's like lost in translation. Because I don't fucking understand Japanese or what anyone every anyone's saying. So like basically just like the blind you know how there's like blind LPs where it's someone who hasn't played the game before this is like the next step of that where I don't even know what the fuck is going on or who's saying what I don't understand any of the tutorials I just it's pure like whatever just walking through without any uh comprehension or understanding I am a fan of the Yakuza series, though, which is what it's called over here when they localize it. In Japan, it's uh, Ryu Ga Gotoku, or something like that, which uh, a more accurate translation is like, Like a Dragon. And the main character of those games is called the Dragon of Dojima, because like that's just his nickname as part of like the organized crime thing that he's in, the Yakuza, obviously. So, like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> this is like one of those naming conventions in Japan that I don't entirely understand. And uh, this particular game, Ishin, is a spin-off title. It's not part of the main series, of which there are five numbered ones. And this is the second, like, samurai feudal Japan spin-off type game. The first of which was Kenzan. Oh god. Hold on. The fucking camera's inverted! Gotta fix that. Oh. Ah. I don't know. Okay, that's better. Alright, as you can see, we got our swank ass samurai sword shit going on here. Uh, the first game to do it in this style, although it was much earlier in Japanese history, was Yakuza Kenzan, which uh, was a adaptation of uh, the story of Miyamoto Musashi, who is one of the most famous samurai in uh, Japanese folklore. This is much later in the timeline. Uh, it's set near the very end of the Edo period of Japan, which was... Uh, the tail end of a uh, good 200 years of peace 
uh, the nation was enjoying after uh, the Warring States period, where the Tokugawa shogunate established control. And uh, 200 years later, fucking Western influences started to pop cropping up and knocking on Japan's door, being like, yo, global economy, bitch. And the leaders of Japan, the shogunate, the Tokugawa shogunate, were like, no. Because they were dicks who fucking, like, were very, they wanted to make Japan very insulated to uh, kind of block out all Western influence to the extent of where even uh, Christian converts and uh, missionaries who had come over uh, in the midst of the Warring States period were, uh, like, hunted down and uh, crucified, actually. Some douchebag, what they would do is, like, they would go to a local town where... Uh, it was suspected the civilians might have been Christian, and they would like take a picture of the Virgin Mary, throw it down, and order them to stomp all over its face. And if they hesitated for even a second, they were like, Christians killed. Uh, but of course, you can't, you can't, even though Japan is an island nation, uh, and it's always kind of had that sensibility where it's like, we're an island nation we don't want to get in the rest of the world's business, no one get in ours, they all, they've they always wanted to be very insulated, even today. Uh, although, obviously, to a dramatically less extravagant degree. But uh, back then, they, like, pretty much completely gated themselves off. Uh, but this was around the time where that was changing. That was, like, unavoidable. They couldn't escape Western influence pretty much any longer. And you see that uh, in the game mechanics of this, because you don't just fight with the samurai sword, you also fight with a fucking revolver gun. Which is fucking awesome. Like, I'm, I'm pretty... Uh, I should be talking about how, like, the world is fairly open. We have this whole... Uh, environment to explore. This is the little town that at least this demo takes place in. Uh, these little orange squares represent uh, uh, restaurants. Blue ones are either like story related or otherwise significant venues. Purple ones are recreational, so like if it's a gambling den or, say, the karaoke bar, it'd be purple. And yellow ones are uh, general purpose stores that sell a variety of things, like either a pharmacy or general healing items or just to-go food items. And uh, right now, uh, we could just wander around and do whatever we want and enjoy the city life, so to speak. But, uh, unfortunately, at this part of the demo, we can't really get into any random battles, and there aren't a lot of side quests open up to us, for the given degree of how many there actually are in this demo, because it is a very short demo. But we can get drunk, at least! <laughs> uh... Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I, I'm kind of rushing to the next story event, just so that we can uh, get some random battles going on and I can have some more interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah, I don't fucking know. So uh, what was interesting is this game is, uh, like I said, set during the end of the Edo period when Western influences were knocking on Japan's door. And obviously the shogunate, who were basically a military dictatorship, uh, that would be the closest, like, uh, equivalent I could compare it to, uh, were like, fuck that. But the emperor, who was at that point had long since been a figurehead who was used to, like, legitim legitimatize... Legitimize? the shogun's rule. The shogun was like, we've got the emperor, therefore we're in charge, bitches. 
And obviously the Emperor by this point was like sick of that, so they were like, mm, let's try and take advantage of this situation to get power back. And so the Emperor was actually, uh, and, and his like support was very uh, good about using the Western influences of the time to get itself some support and power back. And eventually they did, in fact, regain control, uh, loosely, uh, if you've seen the movie uh, The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise, that was a very, very, very historically inaccurate depiction of basically what went down. Sort of. <laughs> anyway, the point is, like, after the... Uh, this is like on the very tail end of the Edo period, which eventually uh, segued into the Meiji Restoration Era. Which, if you're a fan of the anime Roroni Kenshin, or Samurai X, whatever, uh, that is the era that that show takes place in, and it deals with the themes of like, you know... Basically, when that happened, when the Emperor reestablished his role on the Meiji Restoration Era went down, the samurai class, which was a long stay for 200 fucking years, was abolished. There were no more samurai, it was illegal for the average citizen to own a sword. You had to be like a police individual to own a deadly weapon. We've got some combat going on, but I'll wait uh, until later to go into them. Although, uh, I will say that the combat in this game works very differently from how the combat works in the other Yakuza games. And not just because of the swordplay. It feels in general a lot slower, more deliberate. Like I said, I'll get into it uh, when we have some random thugs to run into and beat down in the streets. That's always sort of a theme in samurai fiction, in good samurai fiction at least, because the samurai class was established during a period of war. They were basically just, you know, warriors. They were like career soldiers, more or less. Their entire faction and class and upbringing and lifestyle was based around fighting in war. And so after the Sengoku period ended and the Edo period started with the shogunate establishing its rule in peace, samurai basically had to look at themselves and go like, how do we justify our existence if in, in peacetime? How do warriors function without a war to fight it? And so by this stage in that history, and at this stage, what most fiction focuses on is like, well, the answer is they can't. The answer is there is no purpose or reason to have samurai anymore. We've gotten to the point where not only are they not needed because uh, there's really no uh, war in the traditional sense anymore, but they're really kind of outdated too because uh, the whole like single combat, sword play, that traditional kind of combat has quickly become antiquated with the prevalence and uh, evolution of gunpowder and guns and cannonballs and that kind of advanced weaponry. Uh, but of course the story of this game focuses on a very particular aspect of actual Japanese history of the time, which was uh, Obviously, the political intrigue between the emperor, emperor, em, empirical supporting faction and the shogunate supporting faction was very fucking like out and out. And so there was actually a group. Uh, I don't know if I can pronounce it right, but. Uh, gonna look it up real quick while we wander around try and find some fights to get into.
uh, the Shinsengumi. The Shinsengumi, which was a faction of uh, samurai, quote-unquote, who were supportive of the shogunate. And basically functioned like a secret police. Like the fucking Gestapo, where they would go around tracking down political dissonance and rebels. Ooh, there we go. Fucking A. And, uh, just, you know, slaughter them. Eliminate all dissent to the shogun- the... the shogunate rule. And, uh, the main character of this game, eventually, at least, actually joins that group. To some degree or another. Like, I don't understand Japanese, so, like, I really... Just going off the trailers, I really don't know what the nature of it would be. But that is significant. Like, a Japanese audience would look at him in the uh, pre-release material throwing on this very uh, signature blue jacket and be like, oh, sh fuck, he's part of that group. And uh, like most things in Japanese history, it has been romanticized to a certain degree beyond the actual historical fact of how it actually went down but anyway let's talk a little bit more about the game we've gotten the fucking background of the history stuff the fun history stuff out of the way in a rambling incoherent nature let's talk about the game play itself which is fucking fun because fucking samurai fighting but ooh look at this gun bitches Oh, that's fucking awesome! Ah, oh, shut that fucking guy. That's fucking cool. Oh shit. Ah, uh, how do you block? Uh, I don't know. Oh shit, what the fuck is that? I've never done that before! Ah, I'm discovering things. Oh, I knocked him into the water. Cool. I'm just shooting this guy. And he's blocking it. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't... Uh, if I knew the gameplay mechanics a little bit better with uh, by being able to read the tutorial, I'd probably be able to show it off in a lot cooler ways. As it is, I, I prefer using just the sword by itself without the gun because I, it's closer to uh, how the... Yeah, I got out of the way. Oh, she disappeared! She was a ghost the whole time. It's closer to how the combat uh, mechanics worked in the Yakuza games that I'm used to, at least. Because I'm assuming that this game is based on the... Uh, engine for Yakuza 5, which never released in English-speaking countries, unfortunately. But, uh, it is a different engine from the ones we're used to, Yakuza... Oh, shit. Yakuza 3 and 4, at least, and Dead Souls, which doesn't really count because it sucks. And Kenzon, actually, which was the first game that was made under that new, uh, engine. But, uh, we never got that one either, which sucks. But I talked about that already. But the, uh, combat in the older Yakuza games was a lot more cartoony and bombastic and fast-paced. I, I wouldn't really be able to explain it adequately without, like, a side-by-side -side video comparison of, uh say, the combat in Yakuza Kenzon compared to the combat in this. Ah, uh, shit. I ran dick first into a side quest. And I don't know what's going on! What are they saying?! This kid's fucking around next to the sake brewers. Maybe he's waiting for his dad. I don't know. I'm not your dad. 
I'm Kiryu. What do you want from me? Oh no, he's not a child prostitute, is he? That would be really weird. You're looking for your dog? Maybe it's that. This series has a thing with dogs. With dog side quests. Actually, usually finding the dog is part of the main story. Oh, he's sad, but I don't know how to help him. What do you do? Aw. Hmm. If I knew what he wanted, I would look for it and bring... Aw, oh, goddammit! <laughs> you have touched my soul, child. I will spend time with you. To what end, I not know. I really hope there's no fucking audio glitches and the recording's going well, because I've been doing this for like 20 minutes now, and I've got some good shit here, and it would suck if I lost it all. I don't know, kid. God. I don't even know what's happening. It sucks. At least uh, with Yakuza Kenzon, there was a, like, a really, really, really good Let's Play by a guy called Egomaniac who pretty much translated the entire goddamn game into English. So I could just watch his videos or read along on his Let's Play on the Something Awful forums while I'm playing that game and know what's going on and know how to do these side quests. With this, I'm fucking... I'm totally... I'm totally boned. No ideas. Well, there is something of a guide, but it's not very comprehensive at the moment. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on anyway. Nope. Oh! Okay, this actually is a guide. Okay, apparently this is where, like, I'm sitting down with the kid, and the kid's talking about how his dad's a dick and never buys me toys like all the other kids. And kids are playing with their with their toys. I don't have one, so I couldn't join in. And he asks, "If hey, will you go get me? Will you go get me a toy?" And I don't know, kid. I don't got anything. Okay, I picked the top option to give him something, but I don't have anything to give. Oh, do I? Shit. Shit, son. Let's give him this rusty nail. Or this dildo. Yeah, kid, you want this dildo? Here, you can have a lot of fun with that. There. Get the fuck out of my face, you perverted little freak. Yay. Now we're best friends. Look at our friendship gauge. Man, I was just complaining about there not being a fucking guide for this, and I fucking found one. Well, the one that I am already aware of actually covered this side quest, so that's helpful. Anyway, but yeah, these games are pretty snazzy, if you're not familiar with them. They're uh, actually somewhat reminiscent of Shenmue, except not overrated. Oh shit, people to fight. <laughs> Because there's actual gameplay. <laughs> I'm a dick. <laughs> but uh, it's based on that uh, kind of style where you explore the urban scape. And it's something of an RPG because you level up your character and shit like that. And you get into side quests and things of that nature. And of course, get into random battles. Only they're not really traditional random battles because they're real-time combat sequences like this. And you basically just wander around the city, like, uh, progressing the main story, but also running into people who've got trubs. They've got, they've got life trubs. Gotta deal with things. Gotta, 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 gotta go through the arduous hardships of life. 
and you basically shove your nose in their fucking business, like this, and they're like, hey buddy, what's the matter? And he's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> hey man, what's your issue? Oh, I'm just really sad right now. Oh, here, I'll help you out. And then you do it, and you get experience points. And sometimes money. He hasn't caught a single fish all day. He loves fishing, but he's never once caught a fish, and his wife's a total bitch about it. He promised his wife he'd bring home some fish today. Well, he won't be able to keep that promise because he's such an incompetent idiot. Will you help me fish? I don't fucking know how to fish, dude. What the fuck do you want from me? But I guess I'll help. I suppose. Blah 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 blah. I don't know how to fucking read Japanese. <laughs> uh, yeah. To do this one, you gotta fucking fish. Right here, you can fish, and you do fish, and you catch a fish, and you give it to him, but I'm not fucking doing it. Because I'm not wasting my time fishing right now with your nonsense. But, uh, over here, there seems to be some kerfluffle occurrencing. I don't even know what language I'm speaking anymore. <laughs> mm, I don't think it's covered here. Nope. Nope, doesn't appear to be. This is gonna bug me. I wanna fucking find a translation for this. <laughs> uh oh, there appears to be some intrigue based on that music sting. Dun 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 dun. Ooh, shit. That's a gaijin if I've ever seen one, god dang it. What's this fucking gaijin doing here with his craziness? I'm fucking... I'm some... Maybe he's Portuguese or British, I don't know. What's going on? I don't know. I can't fucking fucking speak this language. What do you want from me? I'm doing the best I can. Oi. What do you want from me, dude? No, I'm just I like samurai. Oh, here we go. Oh wait, no, this ain't this ain't it. Hmm? What are you? Oh no, he's bowing to me. This is super awkward! I don't know what he's saying. And not just because he's a gaijin. Gaijin is like a really rude way to say foreigner in Japanese. I'm super trying to find a translation of this fucking side quest. I can't do it. Nope. Okay, let's go to f let's go to a side quest that actually is fucking documented here, so I can actually show it off. Boy, I don't know what you're saying, so I don't care. Goodbye. I don't know. Something triggered. Oh, well, don't really need a translation for this one. These guys are probably leaving without paying their bill and their douchebags. 
せやけどあなた方のはどちら様へお付けしたらええのかわからしまへんうるせえ俺らは昨日の獅子だぞ天下国家のために命がけで幕府と戦う Hey man, you guys seem like you're being really insensitive and inconsiderate Feel I'm going to have to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Bitch, I'm too badass to engage in discourse with your stupid face. Whatever, dude. Yep, as usually occurs, whenever you experience douchebag individuals in life. You obviously have to beat the ever-living snot out of them. And it's a little fucking weird in these games because you're doing it with a sword and you're fucking murdering these dudes. I can fucking murder these guys! But afterwards it's gonna be like, eh, whatever, just walk it off. What the fuck happened? Why would you do this? What? What is happening? Why? Okay, there we go. <sighs> yeah, they're just fine. Oh my god, that kind of smarts. Sorry for being a douchebag. Bye. Run away! I just slice the fu they fucking murdered those guys. And I was like, okay, that's something weird. Like in the in the in the fucking yakuza game, in the like mainstream games, you're just pummeling these guys with your bare fists, so you can reasonably be like, okay, whatever. You just beat them up and they walk away. It's anime, you know, whatever. Anyway, ah, getting sidetracked by this fucking guy trying to see what's going on in life, the universe and everything. Oh, here's a side quest, but we're not going to do it. It's pretty funny though, but it kind of just gets in the way at this particular moment. Oh, let me see here. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not in the mood for a spa sensation. But I am in the mood for whatever crazy shit appears to be going on up here. Look at these crazy Katamari Damacy motherfuckers. Uh, what's that? What's that? What's that dance? Uh, that? I think this is the ancient Japanese version of that. Look at these motherfuckers dancing. <laughs> okay, this shit's going on. It's like, what's going on here? What the hell's going on? And this guy's like, oh, they're just dancing. The Ijanaika. Yeah, it's been happening a lot recently. People were calling for reformation of the country. Everyone's changing. Apparently from the start it was a group motion calling for reformation, but there are a lot of guys just pretending to be supporters of that cause. As a result, it's become just a silly dance on the street. Fucking hippies getting a hold of everything. And there are even people in these groups who take advantage of the dancing to steal and cause violence. 
And like, of course, right after he explains that, we see some motherfuckers who are trying to cause violence. Boom. So shopkeeper, ah, I'm just gonna steal from you. It's for the reformation of the country. And he's like, you guys are dicks. Get the fuck out of my face. I'm like, hey guys, I ain't gonna sit. I'm gonna sit here and let this happen. I'm the main character. I gotta, I gotta step in and be a cool guy. And I just start dancing. And they're like, fuck you, we do what we want. Haters are gonna hate. <laughs> and he's like, eh, I guess that does look pretty fun. I'm gonna dance too. Yeah! I don't know. Fuck you. He's doing it so I can do it. And the shopkeeper's like, aren't you gonna help me? Oh yeah, sorry. The dance looked really fun. I'm gonna help, I guess. By beating the level loving shit out of these duels. And you know what? These guys want reformation of the country so badly, let's show them what it gets them. Boom! Shooting you in the face. Jesus Christ. This is fucked up! <laughs> I never need to reload! Oh my god! Some kind of samurai cowboy shit up in here. I was pretty fucked up. And of course, I shot them 80 million times, and I was like, eh, that was annoying. Bye. And thanks for your help, even though you got distracted by that sexy dance. Fuck out of my face now. <laughs> Fucking tool. Anyway, sub story complete. Let's move along. And continue to get up to no good. Ah, these look like these look like decent, well-meaning contributors to the community. Let's shoot them in the face. Oh, wow, there's a lot of them. There's fucking gun combos. Gun kata. Oh shit! Oh my god, he kicked him into the air and shot him with the fucking gun! Oh god! This shit's brutal! Uh, in the uh, uh, mainstream games, uh, they're based more around fist-to-fist uh, -fist combat, so there's not a lot of emphasis on sword play, even in those, which is obviously the main focus of this game. But uh, there's not a lot of gun play in those games either, which uh, is kind of weird because like it's set in the modern day and guns are e even more prevalent. But uh, although it is Japan, and they have very, very, very strict gun control rules, which of course uh, means like uh, the usage of guns uh, has a very different context in their uh, entertainment culture. But, and this is pretty brutal because, like, I guess it's supposed to be emblematic of the uh, creep of Western influence in uh, late Edo period Japan. Uh, as far as I know, it's not extremely developed. You're basically just shooting guys. Although for uh, there might be uh, more training and combos later in the game as you uh, progress. Uh, that emphasize the gunplay a lot more because uh, this is the kind of game where like uh, there's a lot of training and the leveling up that lets you get new moves and whatnot. Including heat moves, which are these, uh, which are the things where, uh, let me see. Well, you knock someone down like that, and then you press triangle to fucking wreck their shit. That's a heat move. And it's triggered by, uh, certain situations. Like, when they're on the floor, and I can fucking stab them in the foot! 
unicorn the butt. Whatever. And uh, as you level up and find new training, you find more heat moves that allow you to use different things in different kinds of attacks. So uh, there's probably uh, training or uh, levels you can acquire later in the game that use uh, the gunplay a lot more. But as it stands, it just seems a lot more efficient to just use the sword, or a lot more fun at least, since you're not just standing back and shooting at dudes. But the, uh, like I was trying to explain a long time ago, the fucking combat seems a lot more slow and deliberate. Uh, again, I guess it's like, kinda hard to explain without a side-by-side -side comparison. But it just feels different, and I don't know if it's because it's based off the Yakuza 5 gameplay, where it might be that same style of gameplay, but just without the swords. Or if it's ju a special thing they did just for this game. That's kind of the downside of Sega refusing to fucking release these in the West anymore. I either gotta have a friend who knows Japanese, learn Japanese, or just fucking hope that they eventually bring it over, and that's never gonna happen because Sega's a bunch of douchebags lately, even though they own Atlas USA. And I guess that, that's kind of the point of why I wanted to do, like, the Lost in Translation thing. Because, like, you know, Sega, like, you got fans of this of these games over here in the West, and we want to play them, and the only way to do that right now is by importing them, which is what I plan to do pretty soon, once I have the money for it. I'm just trying out some combos here with my gun sword. Gun sword! Nice gun. Uh, we're like, we want to play these games too, Sega. But there's a lot that we're just not going to be able to appreciate or un even understand about them because you're not localizing them. And that sucks because, like, Sega, we want to give you money. We do. We have money. It's for you. You can take it. It's, it's all yours, but you're just not bringing it over, and it just seems really sh sucky to me, because, like, I don't want to be presumptuous and say, like, oh, how hard is it, but, like, oh, you can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean out the whole fucking menu, shit, yeah, I don't want to say, like, oh, how hard is it, but, like, it has to be worth it. You know, I can't imagine the costs of what it would take to localize these games being more than what they would make by selling them in an international market. Like, I don't know how much it costs to localize something, but the fuck, it, it, they have to still be in the red, you know? Like, when they... I can't imagine they didn't make a profit off the English localization of Yakuza 4, right? I don't know. I don't have their fucking stock information right in front of my face. To say definitively. And obviously they are a business and they have to, you know, if, if they're not making money off something, why even bother wasting it uh, trying? But it just seems like Especially since they have Atlas now, Atlas USA, uh, the guys who uh, do the Persona games, which have some of the best localization of any fucking game on the market right now. Like, it's really impeccable. Uh, especially, like, I think there was a story, I don't know specifically, uh, so I'm probably botching this, but uh, when Atlas USA had to localize... Persona 3, they had, like, a really, really short deadline. Like, they had to do it within, like, a couple months, like, less than a year. I know for sure it was less than a year, which is fucking ridiculous. Especially for a fucking massive, like, 60-hour JRPG like that. To have to localize the entire thing in English in that short amount of time. So, like, Atlas, and it was a good, it was a good localization. That's my point. 
where like Atlas, these guys know what they're fucking doing here. So it seems worth it to like hand the job of the localization for these games that you're doing, Sega, over to them. For uh, what I have to assume would be an affordable price. Uh, at least compared to what you know you'll make off the sales in Western countries. So, like, that's what, that's, like, the message I want to impart by doing a playthrough of this, where, like, I'm a fan, I would pay money for this game, I'd pay for it twice. I, I pay to import it, to just play it even though I don't understand Japanese, and I would pay for it again if they ever localized it into English. And, uh, I'm just doing a playthrough of the demo before I get the actual game. To be like, hey, Sega, like, like, this is my six, six inches of separation here. This is all I can do to show you do have a market for these games, even though you think you might not. So, uh, please bring it over, and I will give you money for doing so. And I will also enjoy the hell out of these wonderful games, because this game is hella goddamn fun. And uh, to show that, I think I am going to try, I don't know if I'll be able to make it, because I kind of fucked up with this triggering certain story events here. I'm going to try and show off a little, oh my god, oh my god, did you see that? Ah! <laughs> oh, I gotta cut corner. Nope. I couldn't show it off. I wanted to show, uh... The karaoke parlor. Oh, wait, no. Maybe I still have time. Nope. Yeah. So, uh, these guys in blue here, they are the, uh... Japanese Gestapo that I was talking about. And, like I said, there's a whole bunch of political intrigue going on throughout Japan at this time. None of that's really coming across with this because, you know, fucking don't understand Japanese here. Well, one I can understand, that guy, uh, Kiryu here, who is not called Kiryu in the game. Uh, that's just who the character is in the other series. But, uh, I'm assuming he's a wanted man, and he's living here under an assumed identity, and this is someone who knows him by his actual identity. And he's like, hey, dude. And he's like, no. Dude, I'm wanted. And so now these fucking guys are going to come over here and be like, yo. And I'm going to be like, no. And run the fuck away. Run away. And thus begins uh, uh, part of this demo I'm not especially fond of. Again, I'm a... Like, I'm blaming a lot of the fact that there's a lot lost in translation here. <clears throat> but basically, we just gotta outrun these fucking guys and hide from them. Oh god. It's hard to do that because I don't know the controls of how to... Oh. Get off my... Bad touch. No means no. Piss off. I don't know how to run, or if there's a way you can increase your running speed. Oh god, I'm hiding! I'm hiding this! They'll never find me. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was saying that sarcastically, but he can't find me. Wow, that's funny. Okay, gotta get to that pink thing on the radar on the lower left there. Hopefully I'll have time. Yes, okay. Booyah, end of demo. At least as far as gameplay is concerned, because now there's going to be a little cutscene. But, uh, completely lost on us, but... Anyway, that was this demo. I didn't get to show off everything I wanted to, but to be fair, there isn't a lot in this demo to show. But this series has always been really fun, really, really quirky. Uh, has a lot of, uh, style and substance, I think. It's really fun to play, but there's also a lot of, like, really amusing, just, things that you can find yourself getting stuck in the middle of. And this game in particular I find extremely fascinating and really fun and interesting and something I want to get into. 
because, you know, it's taking this familiar cast of characters, like that guy is a character from the mainstream games, and he's play and so is him, and they're playing these known, recognizable figures of Japanese history. And that would be significant to the Japanese audience, who is not only a fan of the series of these characters, but would also recognize the roles that they're playing, and that would be, like, meaningful to them. These casting decisions, more or less. It's kind of like in a, like in a cartoon show where, uh, like, it's a Christmas episode, and it's like uh, a telling of the... Uh, of the, uh, like, a Christmas story, or, or, uh, the one with Scrooge. I forget what, it's, like, on the tip of my tongue. And, like, all of the characters of the show are playing, you know, those, uh, people from the story, as if it's a play. I'm really dumb right now for, for some reason. But uh, I'm going to pad out the end of this video with the trailer. Why? Why? Oh, okay. It's really weird. This fucking video capture process is such an inexact science. Yeah, look at how fun this game is. Slice and dice. Anyway, where it's like, it's... I find this game fascinating. I found Kenzon really fascinating too, because, you know, I'm a history nerd. I'm interested in fictional depictions of these historical events. Even if they're not, you know, strictly accurate, it's really fun to, like, take history as, like, uh, you know, a sandbox and really see what kind of stories and statements we can make about these things that happen to us, humanity. And, uh, uh, how we can make them, those events, relevant to us in the modern day. And the things that we can learn from those, from what we know of what happened back then as well. And, uh, if you can do that, if you can, uh, teach an audience while giving them something to have fun with, you fucking succeeded. Uh, even if it's not strictly super 100% historically accurate. Which this definitely isn't. <laughs> even if you want to, like, remove the more sensational, uh, cartoonish aspects of the over-the-top fighting mechanics and the fact no one really dies in these games. Although, in this, it would be very different. It's, uh, like... A lot more people die in these in this game, I would assume, than in the usual game because of the, you know, fucking swordsmanship and whatnot. They are using lethal weapons and cutting motherfuckers down. But uh, even just from what we saw, like, we got into random encounters and people and sliced them up and they were still fine. But uh, even removing that, I mean, look at all these fucking minigames! You slice a cannonball in half! How, how can you deny us this? How can you deny it's this game, Sega? It looks so much fun. You can... You, you, look at this. Ancient feudal Japanese fucking karaoke. This wouldn't be so hard to localize. You don't have to do English dubbing. Just keep it in Japanese and have someone go through the code and translate the script. Like... I'm not saying it's not hard, and I'm not saying it wouldn't cost money, but it'd be worth it, you know? I'll pay you. I'll put up. I'll pony up 60 bucks for a copy. I'm ponying up 80 bucks for a fucking Japanese copy that I'm not even gonna be able to get full enjoyment out of because I don't fucking speak Japanese. Look at, the, look at how fun this fucking game looks, for crying out loud. Booyah. That was the demo for Ryugakatoko... Ryugagatoken... Ryugakatoku Ishin. Ishin? Ishin? Whatever. It's fucking awesome! And I'm gonna import it 
and I'm going to do a playthrough of it, and it's going to be really funny how I'm not going to know what the fuck's going on or happening in life in general, because I don't speak Japanese. So uh, look forward to that one at some point in the future, and I hope you found this enjoyable too. I got I had a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Okay, see you later.